We have some large alligator snapping turtles at Blackwater Turtle Refuge, and when you're taking care of large alligator snapping turtles in captivity, one of the challenges is keeping healthy filtered water. We like stain of tannins in the water, but keeping the water clean and healthy is always a challenge, and we've really mastered that challenge by using an upflow filtration system. Now this alligator snapping turtle weighs 122 pounds and he's just been offered three pounds of catfish. When he eats that, makes a huge mess and then defecates in the water. And by using one of our homemade Do It Turtle Man Cheat upflow filtration system, we're able to feed him. He defecates in the water. The filter will clean that water up in a day's time and we have healthy clean water again and we don't even have to change the water and because this turtle is in quarantine he's a new arrival and he has to spend a year in quarantine and this is a temporary setup for us we didn't want to uh, put into use the aquascape of biofalls on this indoor temporary setup we're using that in the outdoor build that we're constructing so this is a do it turtle man cheap very effective upflow filtration system but i'm going to show you how to build this thing do it turtle man cheap and it works fantastic now I'm going to run you through how we built an upflow filtration system. We've built several of these over the years and they work fantastic. The first thing you need to find is a food grade barrel. I happen to have one of these on the farm and it had a top on it. I had to cut the top out. So you can find food grade barrels uh, in any town used. This one had lemon flavoring in it. Some of them don't have a top on them and that's what you want. You want an empty food grade barrel with no top in it. In mine I'll show you how I cut the top out. First thing I did was take a permanent marker and draw a line around the circle that I wanted to cut out. Then I drilled a pierce hole with a quarter inch drill bit and used a saber saw or jigsaw, uh, you can use a sawzall, to cut around the perimeter of the top and drop the top out. I saved that top for a template for later. And once you get that top cut out, it's a good opportunity to wash the inside of the barrel out real well with soap and water and I put a little bleach in it. I don't like any rough edges so I used a power sander and took off all the rough edges. Because this is an upflow filtration system, the dirty water that's coming back into the filter tank comes in at the bottom of the filtration media. So you need to install a bulkhead fitting towards the bottom of this barrel. Uh, these bulkhead fittings are available online and you can buy them at Menards. This is a one inch bulkhead for a one inch return line. You'll want to use a hole saw on a drill the size that you need for the bulkhead that you're installing. You can use your saber saw or your sawzall to cut this hole, but it does a much nicer job if you select a hole saw in a drill. Any rough edges around this hole can inhibit the seal on the bulkhead from doing its job. So you want to file off all them rough edges. Now it's time to install the bulkhead. The seal goes on the inside. The seal goes on the same side that the water is in. There's a plastic washer with most bulkheads and it goes in between the nut and the tank. So you'll install the bulkhead from the inside of the tank, throw that little plastic washer on there and then screw the nut on and tighten it down. I have a tendency to over tighten things and just remember this is plastic. Next, install a valve in this bulkhead. You're gonna want that valve so if you need to unhook the water line or when the pump is turned off, you don't want it back siphoning out of this filter. Flip this tank over right side up and fill it with water now. Check it for leaks. We have the barrel completed. We have the valve installed in the bottom. We checked it for leaks. So now I wanna take a second here and explain the principle behind biological upflow systems. There's a void area that the water comes into first and that void area can be built out of milk crates. In this video I use an aqua block but it's a void area in the bottom with no filtration media. The filtration media is on top of that and the water flows into the void area and up through the filtration media and by gravity back to the tank that you're sucking the water from. Typically what I did in the past was suck water through filtration media and pump it back out to the turtle tanks where they overflow out of stand pipes and drain by gravity back to the filtration media. But when that uh, filtration media became compacted with sediment, it would never uh, back flush well enough to really get clean and unclog. 
and eventually the sediment would build up in there to the point that it was creating gases and you would be getting air and cavitation in the pump and when I realized that it was from that then you had to go through a painstaking process of removing the filtration media and washing it and taking it out and sifting it through screens and cleaning it. This never requires something like that. The sediment collects in a voided area that doesn't restrict the water from going in there and up through the filtration media. So it works fantastic. Uh, when we converted our large filter system that filters thousands of gallons of water here at Blackwater to upflow, I haven't had any maintenance requirements on it for three years. So it's filtering all the water. The living organisms that are in these biological balanced filter systems are consuming the waste. It breaks down into a sediment that lays in the bottom and harbors more of the beneficial bacteria. Eventually it'll need uh, drained. You open the drain and that sediment will go out the drain. Simple. It works fantastic. I'm showing you how to build one. For the dead space at the bottom of the filter I'm building, I'm going to use an aqua block. You can use a milk crate. An aqua block works great. Either one is square. I saved the top that I cut out of the barrel as a template so that I can cut the square aqua block round into the same size that I need to drop down into the barrel. Once I finished cutting that aqua block into something round that would fit down in the barrel, I dropped it down into the bottom of the barrel. And this is what I would put my first layer of coarse filtration media. My layer of coarse filtration media would be river rock. So I washed all the dirt off of the river rock. Before I started loading this thing up with the river rocks, I had to get it positioned where it would go. It needs to sit so that the overflow of the filter tank is higher than the tank I'm draining back into. I raised it up on cement blocks. Now I could place the layer of river rock on top of the aqua block I had laid in the barrel. That would create the space I needed underneath the first layer of filtration media. It would be about 8 inches up off of the floor of the barrel. My next layer of filtration media, I chose lava rock. It's cheap. I bought it at a local big box store. You can buy it at landscaping companies. It says red lava rock and boy is it. So it needs washed. You need to wash it until all the red stops coming out of it. Another reason I like to use the lava rock is it's porous. It has a lot of surface. That surface and all that porosity in the rock is what harbors the beneficial bacteria. I put my lava rock in mesh bags with zippers because this is a temporary setup and I will be taking that back out and I thought it would make it a little bit easier. I can just pick up each one of the zippered bags, wash them off, and store them in a bucket for another day. A mesh bag full of lava rock like this has hundreds of thousands of pores in that rock to harbor the beneficial bacteria that you need for biological filtration. I placed a layer of the mesh bags full of lava rock on top of the river rock, which was on top of the aqua block. I didn't have enough mesh bags, so I got one full layer of mesh bags in and added a couple more inches of washed lava rock that was not in bags. I'll face that another day. Next was to install the overflow bulkhead. I could have done that earlier. I had to lay towels down on top of the lava rock to catch the dust from me using a hole saw to install this large bulkhead. This would be my overflow. The water would rise up to that level, overflow back into the turtle tank. I found a piece of two inch flex PVC that was in my recycle bin and with some thread tape on it, screw it into that bulkhead and it will trail off back into the turtle tank. 
and with the two inch return line screwed into the bulkhead I fed the other end through a protection wall that was on top of this tank to keep the turtle in. That part of it was done. Next was to get the water flowing through this thing, so I had to install a pump. Now I've used a lot of different pumps in the last 38 years, and I have found these Aquascape water pumps to be some of the best with the highest output and lowest energy consumption that I've ever had. And as far as the longevity, they're through the roof. Now I needed the Ultra 800 for this. I needed to build something uh, alligator snapping turtle proof that was turtle man cheap to put this pump down in. I wanted it close to the surface I chose to cut slots up and down in this PVC so that when the water level goes up and down due to evaporation, it, the pump won't run dry and it'll still skim the surface through those slots. I used a single piece of one inch water line. You buy it at big box stores in 25 foot lengths, 50 foot lengths, 300 foot lengths. It's for underground burial of water lines to like barns and things, but I used it so that I would have no fittings. And we weren't going for beauty here and it's a temporary setup so I could run a single piece all the way from the pump to the bottom of the upflow filtration system. Had a little trouble getting it on the pump and the hot air gun saves me on that. Warm up that pipe, it slides right over there with a nice watertight fit. After I had the water line hooked up, I dropped the pump down in that white PVC sump I had built and then topped off the tank with water. I ran the other end of the water line over to the upflow filtration system, warmed it up with the hot air gun and pushed it on the valve at the bottom of the upflow system. And with the pump down in that sump running, feeding that water line all the way over to the upflow filter at the bottom, the water is rising up through that space, through that river rock, through the lava rock, and over the top of that bulkhead, draining through that 2 inch PVC line and back over to the turtle. So it's an incredible system. Now when it drops into the tank out of that 2 inch PVC, it's getting some aeration, but later I'll add aeration in that filter tank on top. And there's the aeration happening there. That helps to uh, activate those enzymes and bacteria, and keeping everything in a healthy situation. This filter worked better than I had even anticipated and after several feedings we still had not had to change the water. It would be pretty nasty on day one but by day two everything was broken down and the water was clean and healthy. Now keep in mind when you build something like this, you have to run it for a couple of weeks before all of the bacteria grows and, and the longer it runs and the more that the biological balance takes place, the better it works. I want to thank you for watching. I enjoyed showing you how I made this filter. Hopefully somebody can go out there and save a buck and build one for themselves. Hit subscribe, push that notification bell, follow me on YouTube. Don't carry that mountain, climb it. Go out and love what you do.